Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Media Encoder scripting quick tip video. In this one, I'm going to be going over the exporter and encoder objects, what they are and what you can access and do with them inside of Media Encoder via scripting. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out this code on GitHub to try it out for yourself and make modifications. Be sure to follow us there and down in the description as well, you can follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you want to get more help outside these videos, you can join our Discord server and check out the channel's scripting extensions, plugins, expressions, and the others. And you can also help support the YouTube channel by becoming a member and get cool perks with these different tier levels. So let's go ahead and dive straight into this quick tip and go over what the exporter and encoder objects are and what we can do with them. Inside of the media encoder scripting guide, let's first take a look at what the exporter object is here. And the exporter object allows you to access and modify the render queue. That is to say that we can basically uh, read into what's going on in the media encoder, such as how long has elapsed. And it gives us control over things like removing items or exporting things. So some of these are actually labeled as untested. So it may be useful to go in and experiment yourself if you find that you really need this method or property uh, to try it out for yourself. So the first attributes we have access to with our exporter is the encode ID. We have the results and the elapsed milliseconds. These are just properties that we can read from the Adobe Media Encoder exporter object. And uh, it's just information we can read and make decisions based off of. For the actual kind of things we can modify and change uh, regarding the exporter object, we have, we have the ability to remove all the batch items in the exporter or basically in Media Encoder. We can say exporter.trim export for SR. I'm not quite sure what SR stands for, but trimming our export is something we can natively do in Media Encoder to uh, adjust the length of our output. Uh, we also have the ability to export an item or export a group. And again, these are untested. The parameters and returns in the guide are unknown, but these are basically what we have access to with our exporter object. Now let's take a look at what we have access to with the encoder or the encoder host object. I think this has a little bit more control and understandability from the uh, scripting point of view. And what the encoder host object is, is something that allows you to control and query the render queue. And the way we get that is by saying app.getEncoderHost. And here we have just a list of methods of things we can run. No properties to access, just all functions. So first we have run batch, which we've used in previous tutorials, I believe, to actually initialize the basically play button in Media Encoder, which starts the entire render queue. We have the ability to pause the batch, so pausing the render, but not quite stopping it but we also have the ability to stop the batch if we want to completely stop the render process. Then we have the ability to check if the batch is running. This is a method and it will return true or false if the render process is running. Obviously, if it's running, you get a true, and if there's nothing rendering out of Media Encoder, you get false. We have the option to get the format list, which will display uh, an array of the format name as strings of everything in Media Encoder. The next method is to create an encoder for format, Another untested thing that you may want to mess around with, but uh, it looks like it will require things like H.264 QuickTime as the format argument. And now into some more untested things. We have create media comparator, get supported import file types, get source info, which probably provides some kind of object or a string of information regarding the source footage or source composition. And finally, we have get current batch preview, which will likely get whatever the name is of whatever is currently running. But again, a lot of these are untested. The arguments aren't even listed if they require any, and the return values are also unknown. So if you ever have any uh, updates to these, if you find one of these very useful and want to share, you can leave a comment down below or submit in the GitHub link in the description where these are listed and we'll update it for you. But that's a full list of all the exporter and encoder host objects and methods, basically what you can do with them and uh, what they are overall. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this and the GitHub link. Follow us there and submit any updates you find if you're a media encoder guru. And down in the description as well, you can follow us on Instagram for other updates. If you want to get help outside of these videos, you can join the Discord server and check out these different channels like scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. 
And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.